Hi everyone and um, welcome to this video with Papercraft with Jenny that um, is the bonus project for April's monthly card club and I'm going to be showing you this um, card that we made using Fancy Flora. Um, it's called a floating panel card so as you can see um, as you you've got quite a, a standard card front and as you open up the card you've got four floating panels um, in the center and um, that are it's a really easy fancy fold to do. Um, there's lots of measurements, so I will make sure that I add the measurements um, to the details of the video um, so that you can cut all the pieces out first if you want to um, and then make the card up as I've actually done. So the first thing that you start with um, is a ordinary standard half a sheet of A4 card front. So this is literally just a half a sheet of A4 card stock um, folded in the centre to create um, a portrait style um, C6 card base. I'm actually going to be using um, a, a different suite of products for this particular card. Um, I thought I would use um, the Rain or Shine suite um, because I had some papers left over from that one. I thought that'd be a nice one to do, but obviously you can use um, any uh, products that you want to. So I've got uh, two standard size um, layers to go on the inside of my card. So that's going to be those two there, which I'm going to stick down in a moment. And those standard inside layers are 9.9 .9 centimetres by 14.3 centimetres. And then I've also got um, a standard um, size sheet to go on the front as well, piece of DSP. Um, so that one's going to go on the front and the same, exactly the same measurement. So 9.9 .9 centimetres by 14.3. So I'm going to get all of those stuck down first. Um, and then we'll, I'll show you the kind of fancy fold centre. So I'm just using Stampin' Seal um, because it's just really quick and, and easy to do. Um, this is a great card to make if you've got lots of patterned papers within a suite that you like and you kind of want to showcase all of them in a single card um, because you can add lots of different papers to this um, and you'll get, um, uh, you know, they don't look like they're kind of clashing or they're not meant to be there together at this, in the same place, anything like that. Um, so it's a, a really great card to do to kind of showcase lots of the papers. Um, my standard uh, matte, first matte layer um, always leaves just a little bit of a border around the outside um, of the card so that um, it, it doesn't go edge to edge, it just, just leaves a little bit of border. Um, I think it looks neater that way and a bit more professional as well. So. That's why I give you the measurement that I do. And I'm afraid this card is entirely in centimetres. So um, for those of you who prefer inches, I'm afraid I don't have the conversion for this one. OK, so that's the, the um, card base completely finished. So you've got um, a, a lovely um, front to that standard card size card and then two inside panels as well. On um, the one that I made as my first example, I used the Fancy Flora die cut sheet um, to create two die cut panels as the background for the inside. Um, but you can use pattern paper, you can use embossing folders, die cutting, um, whatever you prefer really. Um, so, so that's the standard um, base of the card made. So I'm going to put that one to one side and then I'm going to focus on um, the inside. So I'm going to start with the mechanism and the mechanism requires a single strip um, that will hold all of those um, beautiful panels together. And that single strip is um, a, a bizarre combination now of um, inches and centimetres. So having said it was all centimetres, this bit is actually in inches, weirdly. So this is an eight inch strip um, by two inches um, width. And I'm going to score it now every two inches. So let me just grab my scoreboard. And I am going to, as I say, oh, get it the right way. I'm going to score it every two inches um, along with the long side at the top. So two, four, 
and six. And that will create my mechanism, my folding mechanism for me. So get that one out of the way. So if I go back to the original example, you can see um, there's a petal pink just behind the panels here. And that's the strip that holds everything in place. So what you want to do is have a valley, a mountain and a valley. OK, so that you've got um, your strip is going to make these two center panels float. OK, so it's valley, mountain, valley. So I'm going to um, just crease those. So they give a nice sharp crease. And then they can be stuck down um, in the center that can be stuck down in the center of your card. Um, there's a bit of a tip to getting it in the right place. Um, so what we will do is we'll just stick one side down first. And for that, I'm going to use um, wet glue. So I'm just going to, to stick that in the in the right place first. And I want that to be right in the centre of the card. So um, it'll be around about there when I when I fold it over. OK, well, I'm going to um, just stick it to the left hand side first, just quite central. So that the panel that is on that side will be right in the centre of, of that panel of card. And then when I fold it over. the back of this panel will also be in the center of this side of the card. So I'm going to stick some more glue on there and then just holding it in place, just going to fold it over, smooth that out. And then when I open it up, you've got that, um, that central um, mountain that um, still allows you to hold, fold the card completely flat as well. So you can still put it flat down if you wanted to add um, writing or anything on the inside of the card. But it also folds completely flat um, once you've got it folded as well. OK, so then the final piece of the inside is to add your panels. So what makes um, great panel cards? This piece here as you can see, has some lovely artwork from that fancy flora paper inside. And that's really, really lovely. Um, but what you can also do is use paper that has um, a seam across it. Um, so where the, once you chop it into panels, you'll have that continuous seam all the way through your panels. Um, the great thing about the Rain and Shine Suite is you've got lots of, of this um, uh, patterned paper with the flowers on it. So, so we start off with a piece of patterned paper um, that is, um, well, we're going to cut four strips out of it. And the four strips are going to be four inches by one and a half inches across the top. So what's that? Six by four. So I'm just going to cut these panels now into um, one and a half inch strips. So let's get the scoring um, blade out of the way. So I'm going to cut them into one and a half inch strips. And there's four of them. One, two, three, four. And then just remembering, trying not to mix them up so that you remember which order they're actually in, um, is also, oops, just brush the camera there, is also really helpful so that you've still got that seamless picture. Um, you don't really want to, to jumble them up at this point. I'm going to map them up onto um, some, this is old olive cardstock, and the old olive mats are four and a quarter inches long by one and three quarter inches across the top. So um, these are um, just a, what are they, quarter of an inch difference um, to the um, original patterned paper. So just layering them up like this with again with that little bit of border just around the outside. So paper and card, I'm just going to use um, some seal again on these to stick them in place. And then once I've done that, then they can be mounted onto um, the actual 
um, inside of the card itself. And then it's just about decorating that front really so that the front doesn't give too much away but also makes you want to open it and see the excitement inside. So. Just quick and easy to do. Like I say, if you cut all your pieces out first, um, actually it's it's really easy to do this card, um, really quick to make all the bits up. So you could very easily production line this card as well if you did lots of cutting first. So then with making sure your panels don't get mixed up again, you're just going to add them to the inside of the card like this. And this is where you just need to make sure that you don't um, over glue um, because you only want the glue to be, you only want your adhesive to be behind that central piece of the panel. So for the, fr the first and the last panel, you can glue them all the way across because you've got um, a flat surface um, either side. So that's absolutely fine. So you can add plenty of glue. <clears throat> excuse me, to that first and last panel. But these floating ones, you want to make sure um, that you get the glue just in the center of that panel so that you don't um, accidentally kind of over glue it. So just roughly eyeballing so that there's the same amount below um, that central strip and the same amount above that central strip. And then I find it most helpful to go along in order rather than doing the first and the last ones and then filling in the middle because I want them to be the same height, top and bottom. So I actually find it's just as easy to put a little bit of glue on the actual strip itself. And then that allows you to kind of move it around as well. So if you don't feel that you have got it exactly secured in the right place with the right amount of um border either side or you need to wiggle it about top and bottom then it gives you that flexibility to do that whereas if you're using kind of tape or um, snail or something then you don't have quite so much flexibility to move it around so let's just position those in the right place and then this final one and then i'm going to close the card and give everything a really good press over to make sure that panels are stuck where we want them to be and lined up and everything. So that one can go all the way over. Then I'm just going to close the card and give everything a really good rub over to make sure that there's no bits that end up being loose. There we go. And then there you've got your four floating panels okay so this paper came with um some cute little characters as well so i'm going to add a little character to the front i'm going to add the fox to the front because he's got the umbrella and then i'm going to add the turtle to the inside so um there were dies that went with this suite um but i didn't get the dies because i didn't feel that i'd make best use of them um so i'm fussy cutting because these little characters are so easy to fussy cut out. Actually, um, they don't take too much effort. So you've got exactly what you want. And fussy cutting with scissors, obviously really sharp stamping up snips. Um, and just holding the scissors at a 45 degree angle and turning the paper rather than turning the scissors. So twisting the paper around. So that, And then what happens if you do that is that you don't get the indent of the scissors, which obviously is exactly what you do not want um, on your paper. So really quick, easy way to cut out your shape. And this bit's going to be a bit fiddly because it's the handle of the umbrella. There we go. Not too bad, actually. Not as bad as I thought it might be. And then on the front, I'm going to stick him on using um, 3D dimensional pads. 
Um, but on the inside piece, the turtle is going to be stuck down flat because um, I don't want the inside of the card to be too bulky. But on the outside, it can be as fancy as you want, can't it? So there we go. So we're going to stick him on with some 3D pads on the outside. Can I peel them off? That's the next question. There we go. It's been a, a day like this today as well here. It's been um, sunshine and showers today. Sun is finally out in the back garden, so I might be able to get out and do a bit of weeding in a minute. You never know. So he's on the front. And then on the inside, let's have that cute little turtle. He's not got his umbrella up. He's picking daisies instead. And again, just like I was saying, I'm holding my scissors really still. And I am just twisting the paper and not twisting the scissors. Just holding the scissors at 45 degree angle so that you don't get the cut marks of the scissors on the edge of the paper. This is a really quick, easy, fancy fold to do. Okay, I'm going to stick him down flat there. So I'm going to put some glue behind him, a bit of wet glue behind him. And he's just going to go over the edge of that last panel so it joins everything together. There we go. And then I just need to decide who I'm going to send this to and add the appropriate sentiment to the front as well. So there it is. That's the um, floating panel fancy fold card. I'll bring my two examples in. So we've got um, the um, fancy flora one with the lovely flowers on the front and the beautiful oil painted backgrounds and the floating panels. And I've got this one um, using um, the uh, rain or shine suite with a little fox on the outside and his umbrella and inside the little turtle who's been through the daisy field and picked a daisy. I hope you enjoy making this card. I will add all the measurements um, to um, the video so that you will be able to um, do any die cutting or any um, uh, cutting and scoring trimming first before you start making the card. And um, please do share what you've made. I'd love to see what, what you've made, especially if you were at um, April Monthly Card Club and you've got some of these lovely fancy flora papers left over, then I'd love to see what you make with it. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.